Now we have, uh, I suppose we have the, our next guest as well. It's uh, Rob. Rob is the founder of Tailored Thinking, a pioneering evidence-based positive psychology, well-being, and HR consultancy, who were named the UK's HR consultancy of the year 2020 by the Chartered Institute of Personnel Development. Rob was named number eight most influential thinker by HR magazine in 2023. He's a TEDx speaker and author, and his ideas and research have been presented at academic and professional conferences around the globe. So here he is with us. Uh, welcome, uh, Rob, this afternoon in Drive Drive Show uh, on Radio Vice of Islam. Hi, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, you're very welcome. So uh, the, the first question I have for you is, what are the key psychological factors that contribute to an individual's job satisfaction? Yeah, great. it's a great question. So the way I look at job satisfaction and, and engagement is around thinking about people's light bulbs above people's heads. So if you imagine walking around in a workplace, you can see people's light bulbs and whether they're how bright they are in terms of the how fully lit they are. So that's kind of how I how I look at it. And my work is around how we can make those light bulbs brighter. And those psychological components of, that you mentioned, there's three things that I encourage organizations and teams and leaders to look out for. So one's around kind of competency. So to what extent are they, as an individual, able to tap into the things that they're good at, their competencies, their strengths, their, their interests, their passions. So that's kind of number one, that's their kind of competencies. The second psychological factor is around autonomy. So as individuals, as humans, we love having some independence and flexibility in terms of how we do things. So if we feel that we've been able to shape a task or an activity or shape our work in some way, have our own individuality um, in that task or activity, we tend to uh, be more satisfied at work. And then lastly, the kind of last factor is around purpose. So again, as individuals, as humans, we like to feel what we're doing is, is purposeful, that there's meaning behind it, that the work that we're doing matters. And so, again, as a, an individual, it's around can you see and feel that the work that you're doing has some meaning, some, some high purpose? And the way I think about those, are the, the, those ideas are competencies, autonomy and purpose is around a cap. So they, they, they have around those cap. So when I'm talking to teams and leaders, I think about are you giving people a cap uh, on, their, on their work? So what about different personalities? You know, all, all the you know, everybody is a different personality, and and there are different personality types as well. So how does that impact job satisfaction? Yeah, again, a great question. Um, I think absolutely the way to incre increase job satisfaction is to accommodate uh, our individual differences. Um, so my perspective, great work is around embracing our diversity um, and individual differences, and personality traits are certainly. One aspect of that, and I think the best thing an organization can do, or the best thing an individual can do, is think about what are the things that are going to set them up for success. So if someone is introverted, and I'm an introvert, um, speaking to you to the current today, I know that um, I'm aware of the things that give me energy and the things that take energy from me. So things that give me energy are solo tasks where I can focus on, on activities kind of by myself. I know that that's something I really enjoy, I enjoy doing. It's something that gives me energy. So I try and make sure I have opportunities to do those during the day. Uh, I know that I, yesterday I gave a, a presentation to a large group of individuals and I know that takes a lot of energy from me. It doesn't mean to say I can't do it, but it means that it takes more energy than maybe someone who's more extroverted. So if I was more extroverted, maybe what I'd be thinking about is what are the things that give me energy or satisfaction at work? And it's more likely to be having opportunities to be connected to other people, to spend time with other people in a social setting or in a work setting in terms of building ideas and speaking to other, to, to other people in a, um, in a collaborative and positive way. So personality types, I mean, individual differences are absolutely things that we need to take into account when it comes to job satisfaction. So how important it is that one is in a job which he likes and, um, you know, he, he enjoys what he's doing? Yeah, well, I think it's really, really important. So if you're an organization uh, or you're an individual, life, life is pretty short, right? So as in, from an, if we were looking at this from an individual perspective, I would argue that if possible, I appreciate there's many people who need to work for many, many different reasons. And we don't always have choice and opportunity available to us. And sometimes we have to get what we're given. Um, but if we do have that opportunity, I would argue that life's too short to be spent doing something that, we're, that doesn't bring us happiness and joy. It doesn't mean to say that you have to enjoy every element of your joy. And actually, the research shows that 
as long as you're doing 10 to 15 percent of tasks and activities that bring you joy and happiness that can kind of buffer uh, mitigate some other aspects that you don't necessarily kind of enjoy as much. So you don't have to be loving every single part of your day every day to be satisfied at work, but you need to have at least 10 to 15 percent of the, the tasks really orientated to the things that you that you enjoy. From an organization's perspective, looking at it from that perspective, if your individuals are unhappy, they're unlikely to bring in their full self to work, they're unlikely to bring their full energy, they're more likely to leave that job and go to another job. So it might mm-hmm. lead to retention issues and they're unlikely to be performing at their best. So as an organization, if you're looking and you want people to perform at their best and stay with you, then I'd say happiness is a, is a really important question to be looking at. That's great. So what role does work-life balance play in job satisfaction and how can individuals yeah. and organizations improve it? That's a great, again, a great question. Uh, I would say that work a good work-life balance looks differently for for everyone in terms of job satisfaction there's no magic formula when it comes to this and in fact some people and i i kind of fall into this camp actually don't like this idea of work-life balance particularly helpfully because work is part of life so one of the ways i like to frame this or think about this is work-life integration because work is part of our life it's not something that we do consistently uh, from our life is part of what we've heard of what we do but I certainly think we need to get a balance between, say, leisure activities and uh, to those activities that take demand from us, such as such as work and, act, and, and activities. So it's um, what individuals can do is to think about one of the things that works can work well is to have some really clear boundaries in terms of what you're willing to give to work and where you want to kind of where you want to stop. So that could be for some individuals being really clear on the number of hours that you're working or when you're going to finish work each day. Uh, and if, if you have some flexibility in terms of that perspective or and I know that a number of the listeners here today will be working, maybe potentially working from home or working remotely. And one of the things that might be helpful in terms of putting those boundaries is having a, um, a, a really clear routine for closing your day. And some people I work with introduce kind of walking uh, commutes so they actually go for a walk around the block at the end of the day to kind of show that differential between uh, being at work and being and being at home so they have that opportunity to to, to, to switch off from an organizational perspective what you can do again is to be really clear in terms of your expectations of, of colleagues and one of the things I think there is a lot of organizations aren't very clear about is and again this is particularly for knowledge workers for those individuals where maybe they have access to email uh, where there's kind of the opportunity to be on and working 24-7, uh, then to actually to be really clear on what your expectations of your colleagues are. So, you know, for example, if you send an email at night, are you expecting someone to respond to that? Are you happy that people end at a certain time at the end of the day and don't check and respond to work so they can come in the next day with more more energy and vitality rather than having to kind of work late all the time or be worrying about respond, missing an email that a, your, a manager might send late at night. So it's around having those boundaries and expectations of each other, both for the individual and for the, the organization. Right. Um, thank you for that. Are, are there, you know, from the psychological perspective, are there any effective psychological interventions or strategies to enhance job satisfaction in the workplace? Yeah, there's lots of there's lots of things you can do to kind of enhance. There's hundreds of things you can do to enhance job satisfaction and job engagement within within the workplace. One thing a leader can do is to kind of is, is to bring those ideas, that cap ideas, to their leadership and their approach, so that if they're working with a with a with a team or an, an individual, they can think, okay, do I understand my colleagues and my employees' their strengths? Am I talking about them? Am I giving them positive feedback in terms of what they're doing? And you can say, am I giving people flexibility in terms of how they do certain tasks? So rather than say you have to do this task in the way they tell you, it's saying I, I'm expecting you to do this task and I want you to find your own way um, of, of completing it. So I'm not kind of concerned in terms of how you, how you do it. And they can also point out and be really clear to individuals on the purpose of why they're doing what they're doing. So the impact they're having to their colleagues, their family members, but also the customers that they're serving. So they can actually think what's their contribution they're making in terms of the wider world through the work that they're doing. So that's one thing that kind of managers can do. And what individuals can do is to kind of be really clear themselves about what are the things that they would like, how, what are the opportunities they have in their control to make their, their life better, they make their work better. So is it around tapping into their own strengths to, to doing things that they, that they enjoy? 
is it ways of um, looking at their skills and, and growth so they can grow and develop themselves? Is there some reading they can do or research in, in, uh, or volunteer for a particular project? Are there connections to other people they can make at workplace that they enjoy spending time with and learning from? Are there things that they can do that they feel are particularly meaningful and purposeful and try and orientate their work towards those, those different ways? And lastly, how can they do things from a well-being perspective that they can make their job healthier from a mental or physical perspective? So it could be having, <clears throat> for those who are getting office workers, it could be going for walking meetings um, outside, or it could be um, trying to be mindful of the number of steps you're taking each day. If you have a desk-based job, so you can get up and move, move around. Uh, or if you have a very physical job, is it that you can take regular breaks and looking after yourself? Um, so there's lots of things we can do in, in individuals' perspective and the manager's perspective. But I would keep coming back to these, the CAP idea in terms of your strength or your competencies, the autonomy and connecting to your purpose. And you can't go too far wrong. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, just, just one last qu question before you go. In your observation, are there any interesting emerging trends or areas of study are we seeing about uh, job satisfaction through the psychology psychology lens, particularly in this post-COVID area? Yeah, one of the areas that I'm I'm actually really interested in myself, and in terms of a research perspective, but also an application, is a, is a concept called job crafting. Mm -hmm. So job crafting is encouraging individuals to personalize their approach to work. As you said at the start, kind of quite rightly, we're all different as individuals. Mm -hmm. And so job crafting is saying, why, rather than having one sits one size fits all the way to, to doing a job. You encourage your individuals in terms of how they can make their jobs better for themselves, how they can tap into their strengths and interests. Um, so the, a, a really great starting point for that is to ask, encourage conversations between managers and individuals in terms of how can you improve your job? If you could make your job 1% better each, each, each week, what would that 1% look like? What's a positive change you can make without changing the footprint of your job? And although a lot of people are concerned, or managers in particular get concerned with this idea of crafting and saying, I'm not going to control individuals, what we find, particularly in the post-COVID era, is that when you give people that permission, they tend to respond in very positive and proactive ways. They craft in ways and improve their jobs in ways that help themselves, but also help their colleagues and help the organization overall. Thank you, Rob. Uh, it was interesting, uh, you know, talking to you, and uh, I hope it was beneficial for our listeners as well. Thank you for joining us uh, on Drive Time Show this afternoon on Radio Voice of Islam. Um, no, not at all. Fascinating topic. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye.